Hello and welcome back to the Denford factory. I'm Oscar Denford and today we're going to be showing you how to set up an F1 in schools car ready to race. So what we're going to do is we'll start off with a demonstration car we have here and you'll start by placing the tether guide through the eyelets underneath the car. This can sometimes be quite fiddly depending on how the eyelets are manufactured. and place the loop over the back of the track. These pulleys are optional um, and available on the Denford forum for download. Uh, the standard tracks come with a single screw, so basically place the loop over the screw head to give tension to your tether guide. So what we do now is we will roll the car towards the start line and then we will engage the start box by turning the handle horizontal and then placing it in safety mode. If by any chance you would like to disengage the start box, here is how you'd do it. Whilst the start box is in safety mode, it will not be able to disengage. However, once you put it in race mode and you pull this lever, it will disengage just as it would firing a car. Then we would re-engage the start box. So once you have engaged the start box, you will then put the power pack into the back of the car and begin to align the power pack with the firing chamber. As you can see here, the car is not aligned to the firing chamber, so we will loosen this nut to allow us to adjust the height of the start box and line up the CO2 canister with the firing chamber. It's good to roll the car back and forth to ensure that the side of the CO2 chamber is not touching the firing box, like so. And you tighten that up to make sure the height does not change. Then we'll push the whole assembly towards the front of the start and we will line this up by using a flat surface such as a start box or any alignment jig you may have made and lining it up to the start of the black line. Then the car is aligned and ready to race. After this, all you have to do is place the start boxes into race mode and press the orange button to engage the start sequence on the start gate. The race will either be conducted in manual or automatic mode. You can change between the two by flicking the switch on the back of the start system, like so, automatic and manual. We'll be racing this in manual, so all the students will have to do to race the cars is press the triggers once the lights have gone out. Once you've completed the race, you will then want to retrieve the cars from the deceleration system, and this is how you'll do that. So first you grab the deceleration system by the handles and then start to lift it up from the back, being careful of the position of the car and holding it down if it starts to rise with the deceleration system. You will then lift the deceleration system off the track, place it next to the track, push the car out of the position of the deceleration system, and then place the deceleration system where it was before. You'll want to make sure that the deceleration system sits within its lane. As you can see here, there is a groove on the middle of the lane and a groove on the outside of the lane. This will let the deceleration system sit nicely in the right position. You'll want to ensure that the thick side is on the red and the thin side is on the silver. This will prevent any overhang of any of the metal from the deceleration system potentially touching one of your cars. Um, and then all you'll have to do is take the car back to the start line and repeat everything for each race. Thank you for watching this tutorial at the Denford factory. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with any future tutorials or videos. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at uh, Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next one.